o'clock in the morning. Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the White Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And before me are some Grenache because I'm, I, I've been giving it some stuff. Wait, wait, before I start, I got jumped right into it. I want to say happy anniversary to Richard... Oh, come on. And Sherry Daly. I just, I don't know why I spaced out. Richard and Sherry, you know, the cheese shop in town. Great lunch spot. Probably a couple of the nicest people I know. I think it's their 36th anniversary today. So happy anniversary to them. This is November 1st, first day of November. And with November comes, we start thinking about Thanksgiving, not too far away. And we think about, uh, well, many of us don't, let's face it. Wine is one of the last things you think about with Thanksgiving. It's one of the first things I think about. And I've been giving it some thought this year in particular because what I've been trying to do over the years is I've tried to incorporate Zinfandel into Thanksgiving. And for some reason, it's just not working for me. I know a lot of wine guys out there say Zin's a good thing, match up, and you know, it's a little jammy and all that. But I, the problem with Zin for me is it has tannins. And, and Zin can go from moderate to heavy tannins. And I know a lot of people don't think about that, but that conflicts with the foods. Uh, Thanksgiving is a very savory meal, but it's also a very soft meal. There isn't really, uh, you know, big meats or big things in Thanksgiving. And I'm talking about traditional. And a lot of you don't do traditional anymore. And I understand that. A lot of you go to duck or to ham or whatever you do. But I'm just talking about traditional turkey, stuffing, sweet potatoes, all that good stuff. The green bean casserole that many, many people do. In fact, the majority probably do that meal at Thanksgiving. What wine would you use for Thanksgiving? Perhaps you've used Pinot Noir, and I've always suggested if you use Pinot, stay away from Pinots that get into the acidic area because that acid conflicts with the meal. Uh, maybe go to California Pinot Noir that has a little of California sunshine on it and gives it a little plumper, fatter feel on the palate. That can work. Absolutely, that works. And I've done that before and had some success. But one of the things I've been thinking about is I think Grenache would be a great matchup with Thanksgiving. In particular, Garnacha from Spain. And the reason I feel that way is because it's moderate tannins. You could also go Australian um, Garnacha, Grenache. I believe it or not, Australia does great Grenache, if you can find it. Not as easy to find as Garnacha from Spain. But what I find about Spain is you can get really... Uh, reasonably priced garnacha that is very very good and when you're feeding a lot of people you have a big family gathering it's always nice to have uh, wines that are less expensive so that you can buy it and not worry it doesn't bust your budget as we say <clears throat> it's so interesting in my family don't have a lot of wine drinkers my daughter's a wine drinker um, my son-in-law is a wine drinker, so this kind of adds a little element to that. But in the past, you know, not a lot of wine drinkers. So I've usually been the one that, you know, I'm buying it for myself, so to speak. But this year might be a little bit different, and I'm looking forward to that. So Garnacha. Uh, really originated in Spain, and uh, I think they gave it the name Garnacha in 1603, somewhere around there. Um, so it's really, you know, it, it has its home in Spain. That's where it came from. And, you know, so I think it's appropriate that we use Garnacha for Thanksgiving. Let's see how these turn out. We have the Castilla de Montserrat Garnacha from Carignania, Spain, and this rolls in at 10 bucks. No, actually this one is, I take that back, this one's $8. There you go, eight bucks. Let's see what we get on the notes. I, I don't know if you notice, these are down a little bit because I uh, had already tried them earlier, that's what inspired me to do this episode. 
uh, sales rep came by uh, and tasted me on these wines and we actually came out with my pick of the month because I really wanted to go with a Garnacha for my pick of the month. I, I think I mentioned this before, I, usually at the end of the aisle I have a spot that's dedicated to what I decide to, as a pick of the month. Usually in November, which is my birth month, I turned the big 5-5 five five this year, um, I go with more of an old world style. I figure in my birth month I can go with wines that kind of are for my palate. But I really wanted to pick one specifically for the turkey traditional Thanksgiving dinner. So let's see what we get on the nose here. This one has a lot of plums and blackberries on the nose and a little bit of tobacco. Okay, interesting on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Has a little bit of juiciness. This has some minerality at the end of it. But the thing I like about these is it's a lighter style um, wine, but good fruit flavors, good blackberry, plum, tobacco comes through right on the back of the mid palate into the finish. Now, I, we use the term tobacco quite a bit, and I know there's some critics out there that say you can't get tobacco, whatever. I, whatever. You do get tobacco. And uh, this one has that minerality on the backside. Now, when you add the savory elements of Thanksgiving, that minerality blends in nicely. The cool thing about this wine is it doesn't have heavy tannins. It's very smooth. They're there. It's good structure, but not heavy tannins, which would interfere with the lighter style of the savoriness of the meal. A lot of words. You probably get the point. Yeah, I, you know, for eight bucks, this would be a really nice play. I'm going to give it in the kind of an average C, C plus. It doesn't have a huge amount of complexity, but that being said, great wine. Buy a case of this, you know, eight bucks a bottle, 96, so around 87 bucks, 85 to 87 bucks for 12 bottles. That would definitely handle a good crowd at your house and leave some left over. Great wine. Good pizza wine. Good Thanksgiving wine. I like it. I would drink it by itself, actually. Let's move on. LaGuardia Garnacha 2014. And this is from uh, Campo de Borja, Spain. This rolls in at $10. Once again, I didn't purposely focus on this price point. I think uh, the sales rep wanted to come in with a little bit lower price, you know, for the pick of the month. You know, it's always exciting to get one around 12 bucks. It was really good. But uh, again, a lot of us are having a lot of people over and we are thinking budget. You know, you're already spending a boatload of money on food. There's my word, boatload. You're already spending a lot of money on food and now you don't want to have to uh, go for a super expensive wine and most of the people there you're all family you're all together you're having a good time you're not gonna be that critical about the wine maybe I would be but most people would not be by the way good time to be a Washingtonian Huskies are doing good Cougars are doing good Seahawks well they lost this last game but they're still leading their division kind of exciting time especially in football I love football played football high school nose guard I love football and it's exciting to have your teams in your area doing so well. Not a Cougar fan, but I'm, it's really cool that they're doing well. And, of course, the Huskies are undefeated. Exciting. Good team. Let's see what we get on the nose. So this one, tobacco all day. Give me a little of a, of a dirt element coming through. This is leaning kind of towards uh, uh, currants and strawberries on the nose. Yeah, and I think a little bit of a dried cardboard element. Now, that doesn't mean it's cork. That would be wet cardboard. This is like a dried cardboard. You know when you walk in, maybe have you ever walked in where like a, a moving place where they sell cardboard boxes? 
Get that kind of dried cardboard smell. That's what I'm getting. Let's see what we get on the palette. This has a little less going on than the first one, but what I like about this wine, it has that kind of charred, kind of meaty element to it underneath. Again, not heavy tannins, but a ton of tobacco. I mean, this is tobacco front to back. Might be off-putting to some of you who like fruitier wines. For some of you guys that like old world wines like myself, this is a nice wine because it has that kind of dirty, dirt, earthy, tobacco element with that little bit of a blackberry coming through and some currants and I get the strawberry right on the back side of this so that kind of matches the nose you're always kind of going why do I smell it but I don't taste it that happens sometimes um, but in this case you do get the strawberry on the back side I like this wine too. I think this wine would be really good with um, turkey. A little bit too earthy. I, I would be careful with this one unless you know all the palates of everyone that's sitting at the meal that they would like this style. I personally like it. I might actually get some of this for Thanksgiving. I might get a couple of these because I just kind of want to compare and see. You know, that's how geeky I am. I'm always thinking about food and wine pairings, how they work together, and it helps because I get a lot of people that come up the aisle, they say, well, you know, I'm having this, I'm having this, what would go with that, and that happens a lot, a lot. And so I really think about it a lot. And so I'm going to experiment this Thanksgiving with different wines. I will do Grenache, I will do a Pinot Noir. Of course, you got to do Pinot Gris, Riesling's always good. You can't go wrong with Riesling or Gewurz demeanor. But I'm, right now we're doing red, so, you know, kind of earthy, very tobacco-y. Is that a word? tobacco -y? A lot of tobacco. A little bit of strawberry on the finish. You know, get that blackberry element coming through. I'm going to go CC Plus on this one too. I think it's an average, a little above average wine. Average to above average. I like it. I especially like the price point of 10 bucks. Let's move on. Art Tazuri Garnacha 2013. Um, this is produced by Artadi. And this is coming from Navarra, Spain. And you know, it's not, not getting into a lot of geography of Spain and where these regions are necessarily. Uh, don't want to make this episode go too long. I was really more interested in talking about the pairing of the wines to Thanksgiving meal, to the Thanksgiving meal. So I'm sorry if you want to know all that stuff. Just not going to go there on this episode. Let's see what we get on the nose. So a little stink action going on. Let's take it quite a bit different than when I first opened it up. I'm getting more licorice, getting blueberry for sure. Blackberry element, so you kind of like it's blueberry, blackberry thing going on. Let's see what we get on the palate. And this, the stink kind of blows off right away, but initially I got a little bit of stink action, which is okay. You know, you don't want to, you, you never want to kind of throw this is a bad wine because it stinks a little bit. Just give it a chance to kind of breathe out of your glass, and that will go away most times. There's only one time, one time I can remember. I smell the wine, it smelled like poop, and it tasted like poop. I couldn't get to the sink fast enough. I was trying it in my bedroom. I was watching a sports thing going on, and um, I don't know. I could not get there fast enough. It's the only wine I've ever ran into that smelled and tasted like poop. I don't want to have that experience too many times. This has more fruit going on. 
the blueberries hit right up front, and then the blackberry kind of takes over going into the mid palate. I get a little bit of tobacco, but once again, there's not these heavy uh, tannins that grip in, in your mouth and on, on your palate, especially at the finish. I do get some minerality on the finish and almost a candied blackberry element coming through with a little bit of tobacco. So this one was also 10 bucks. I'm, I'm going to call this a better play for 10 bucks than the than La, Lagardia. Lagardia is good. This has more going on. That tobacco gets a little earthy on the finish. But once again, I'm thinking in my mind, okay, you're having turkey, stuffing, black olives, maybe some green olives. You're having the, the casserole. You're having some, maybe some Brussels sprouts. All those elements together would meld nicely with this wine. The tannins are soft enough to keep it from overbearing those softer savory sides, but at the same time, they marry good together. And I can see those flavors all kind of working with each other. One thing you're never gonna work out with wine is cranberry sauce. Now, Susie, uh, my girlfriend, is uh, going to make a homemade cranberry sauce. She says I'm going to really like it. So that'll be an interesting thing. I've always been kind of a canned cranberry guy. It goes way back to when I was a kid. We used to just slice that stuff up. We loved it. Now, I haven't had that in a long time, actually, to tell you the truth, because I've always thought it conflicted with wine. be interesting to see how this homemade cranberry sauce will do in that case. Yeah, the licorice comes through. The, oh, excellent wine. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go B plus on this. I think it's a really good play. If you can find this, uh, Artizuri from Artadi Garnacha, 2013. Excellent wine for ten bucks. Yeah, I'm gonna go B B plus. Let's move on. Brits here. You notice I didn't rinse all my glasses in this particular episode because I'm doing all Grenache. All from the same, basically the same place. So, not absolutely necessary in that particular instance, but this is the Alto Cinco uh, Garnacha 2011. Um, this is emanates from Carnina again. This rolls in at $12. So in our Garnacha tasting, this particular wine, this particular wine was my, is going to be my pick of the month. So let me tell you what I see on this and why I made that decision. First of all, it's 12 bucks, a little bit more than these. Uh, this was actually, this one was one that I preferred, but they didn't have enough supply. I didn't prefer it. I just thought the price point was better. Uh, but this one has a lot of character and let me tell you what we get on the nose. So this one gets a little bit like ripe currants on the nose, big time. So I get ripe currants, black licorice, a little bit of strawberry. Coming through on the nose. And again, that dried cardboard thing ha is happening on there. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. This has a little bit of Amarone characteristics to it, so it gets that kind of real dried currant flavor. We might say raisin. It doesn't go completely raisin, but it's there. But what I like about it is that solid fruit notes that come through and let, and yet it still dances lightly on your palate. It doesn't get weighed down with big tannins or anything like that. So you get that fruit, a little bit of minerality, a little bit of tobacco, all those things come together and you get a really interesting like 
uh, orange peel element that comes through on the back end, very back of this wine. Yeah, I like this wine a lot. Um, the only reason I was going to go there was because of the price point, but when they said they didn't really have a good supply, and you know, we're talking quite a few cases go out the door on my pick of the month. Even for a couple bucks more, you get a much deeper wine without getting heavy. That's a good thing. That citrus on the backside is a real plus, but not acidic, okay? Just that kind of citrus flavor comes through on the backside. And I can see that working with a lot of the different elements of the Thanksgiving meal. So that is going to be my pick of the month at King's Market, San Juan Island, Friday Harbor. For the month, if you can find it, I know uh, not all of you live here. If you can find this one, let me give you a real close up again. I think for 12 bucks, it's a real good play for Thanksgiving. And I hope I'm going to make a strong effort to remember to report to you guys after Thanksgiving on my episode how I thought they worked with the meal. And you know, if I'm wrong, I'll admit it because that's the way I roll. You keep watching and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely. Hey, Dad. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. I just left the gym studio. Maybe I hollow. Everybody's here but the police. And they'll be here any minute. It's high time. So catch the song. Here it is.